Right, we'll get started, eh? Um, hey, you guys finding the, uh, the study? Soul yes, detox. Great. Feedback much of group? All good? Hit the spot? I, I have heard from a, a number of people like this, like, how did you know that this is what I needed? <laughs> he knows, right? And the senior pastor would like to say. Thanks, guys. Just a couple of things. I've got my whiteboard over here, and then you all moved over there. Hopefully, you're going to be able to see what I'm going to put on there. Just want to. I want to. That's that's the point I want to make, and I just want to wrap it around this. Let me give you some scriptures. Amos 4:4. 4, 4. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? The answer is no. They can't. So there needs to be an agreement. Right? 2 Corinthians 12, 18. I sent you Titus, says Paul, and we walked in the same spirit. We walked in the same steps. Get a little theme going here? Yeah. 2 Kings 2.9. This is Elisha. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. He's not asking the Holy Spirit. He's asking for the same attitude, the same spirit that Elijah had. And he did get a double portion, he got a double whammy, I'll tell you. So when you ask that, just be careful. Because it could... Yep, yeah, there we go. Let me give you this one. Philippians 2, 19 to 22. I have no one else like Timothy. For everyone else looks after their own interests. But Timothy has proved himself as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. And, and uh, I, I do the uh, full song leadership meetings pretty regularly, probably once a month, and they, they talk about these things all the time. And when I look at the Hillsong kind of empire, when I first connected with Hillsong, they had one campus in Castle Hill, and it was a church about our size. Uh, when, when their worship pastor left, uh, Jeff Bullock, everything changed because at the same time Brian's dad, who ran another church which had actually been the sending church for Hills, also left due to a moral issue. Uh, they had to redo their worship and they had to become a multi-campus church and everything changed and now they're multi-multi-multi-campus all over the world. And I think, how does Brian hold all this together? And it's because of that stuff. They all work, walk together with the same spirit. So anyone that gets put in any role anywhere needs to have that spirit. Otherwise, they won't be on the same page. One of my favorite diagrams for you, I hope you can all see it. The circle there represents the church, the local church. That there represents Gordon, the senior pastor, and a couple of key people that kind of support him uh, with uh, with a minister of type roles, like Catherine would be one of those. So Catherine's there. And then we have four core ministries in the life of this church. We have youth. And we have Pastor Olivia right here. We have worship, we have Derek there. We have kids, we have Bron there. We have connect groups, and we have Gavin there. What makes sense to you? Now, within uh, those ministries, there are other individuals that are key and integral, helping these leaders make it happen. And over here with Gavin, that would be all of you folks. Now, Catherine, you got the, you got to clean that off for me now, Catherine. I hope, hope you're getting this. This is how the whole church works. And I think the circle is
So all, all the key people in here need to be walking in the same steps and with the same spirit, otherwise you rip the page. Yeah? So now you, you saw the, the Gavin one, it was Gavin and, and all of you. Let's uh, do another one here and that would be, which group I picked on? Um, let's, let's do the Gibbons group. Gee, this time it's not for Gordon, it's for Gibbons, right? In your group you've got who? Uh, Sorry? Ron? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, Buzz Ron is in your group, yeah. I was thinking you were in her group. And you are sometimes, right? Jeff Dave. Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Jacob Stevenson. Louis Gow. Yeah. And then the Gibbons. Oh, you're yeah. <laughs> Gibbons. So, so. This is how the whole cell principle works. You see, uh, you are in Gavin's group, but all these people are in yours, and he's in my group. And so we all have to have the same spirit and walk in the same steps. Now, you're gonna, your steps are going to look like you, but you're just following the steps of where the church is going. Otherwise, you rip the thing apart. And it becomes so apparent with Hillsong, and you guys are going over to the Hills Conference for the first time, you, you're going to see this and go, yeah. They all work together. That's how this great big thing works, because they're not trying to do their own thing. As the Apostle Paul said about Timothy, most people are just trying to do their own thing. He said, but he, he's working with me, and he's helping me do the thing God's given me to do, and therefore it works. Um, now, because in the initial one I drew, that G was Gordon, and I put Catherine in there, and I put some other key people in there, like Alethea, I just thought I might interview these folk this morning briefly because I know you want to get home to your roast pork should you have a pig at home that you <laughs> and Jeff does and <laughs> uh, so uh, Catherine come up here and uh, what I'm going to do we'll walk up here trying to upset that whiteboard by the way that whiteboard is literally on its last legs you may never see that one again uh, I inherited that from Gavin, and the, the legs were supposed to tighten up. Those did not. They could go down any minute. And that would be that'd be good if, if they do get it on the video, would you? That'd be a YouTube clip that that will be go off the Richter scale. So, so, Catherine, how long have you actually been here at this church? It's 2008. Okay, you figure that out. So about seven years. Yeah. Now, uh, Catherine. How long have you been on any form of our staff? Was that before or after I had you on the platform? Before. I got you on staff first, then had you on the platform. Yeah, sometimes I've done it the other way around. As I looked at test the waters to see whether people will walk in those same steps and by that same spirit. Now, Catherine, uh, I've hired you to do certain jobs, and I think firstly it was to do finances. And then it was to do facilities, um, maintenance and management and all that. And then it was to be in the deeper end of the pool to be my personal assistant, right? Now, you would not have done this unless God said, go for it, Catherine, right? Talk to us about that. When I first arrived, um, week after week, the Lord would remind me to submit to the authority I've set you under. And I'd say every week, I am submitting. It would go on week after week after week until the point where I said, I am submitting. He says, no, you're not. I said, why not? He says, you're afraid of what they're going to ask you to do. So I knew from that moment that I had no authority in myself to say no. And I had to trust that whatever I was asked to do is what Jesus wanted me to do. And it was scary, but that's how he led me. And so I came, became a staff member. And then after about four or five months, he came and asked me if I'd do care card talk. And everything in me screamed, you know, run away, run away, run away. But I knew I couldn't because I'd already been told to submit. But he kept asking me, are you saying yes or saying no? Don't ask me, just tell me. <laughs> Be very afraid if Gordon asked you to do a care card talk. Anything could happen, yeah? Uh, thank, thank you, Catherine. You can stay there. Stay, don't walk anywhere there. You're never going to. Uh, Alethea, come on up. Alethea came to work for us, I think probably in 
2001. Mm -hmm. And just tell us where you first worked for us, right? So I started in the front office. I was front office Salifia, I don't know. So I sit right in there, just with those doors every day. What do we get you to do next? Um, so while I was still doing front office, full time front office, I also um, started with, with Pastor Danny and a few other people. We started junior youth. So I was doing that sort of as a volunteer on top of my full time, and then eventually I got paid to do it for one day. So one day a week, um, I would actually sit in the boardroom and work on youth and junior youth, and we had some of that. Actually, had Emma come at the front desk while I was doing that. Interesting enough, uh, Alethea was full time and she became the assistant youth pastor to a, to a youth pastor who was on full time. Yeah, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, eventually it, the role morphed and I did become a full time assistant youth pastor to our youth. Well, I wasn't really her assistant, but to the youth pastor who only worked two days a week, which was always an amusing concept for us and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, I've actually moved actually into the back office, which is now the ministry lounge, with the four of us <laughs> in that room. But I did that full time, I worked full time. I'm telling you all this because what you're doing now, if you're faithful and walk in the same steps and by the same spirit, you may not keep doing the same role, right? And I look at the given since I put them up on the board there, and they've recently stepped into a role in the ministry lounge. And uh, it's just God that said so loudly to me, they are people people, not just children people, but people people. And I watch them connect with people. So we want to utilize them with new people and people that are searching out life's issues. And so whatever you're doing now, you may not be doing always. And some of you do lots of roles now, but one role will be probably not the top priority for you as much as another one is. So uh, just think about that, because the whole thing is, as we grow the church, is to be looking for people who walk in the same step and by the same spirits. So give these guys a big round of applause. Thank you for coming up here this morning. Yeah, thank you. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Excellent. All right, so last thing for, or second last thing for today, next latest meeting is on the 12th of July. Um, so it'll be like a week before school goes back just so we can get uh, our heads around the next study for next term. And I just need someone who will pray. That would be me, if you don't mind. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. There's something I forgot to say, and it's about prayer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else wants to join me up here for prayer, that's fine. You, you can. I just want to talk about prayer, since Gavin's put that subject on there, and, uh, yeah, we're not meeting tomorrow night because it's a public holiday, so we have one study left to do, but we're going to wait at the prayer thing. And of course, Sunday nights we've been doing these uh, series of studies on prayer, and uh, in the 8:30 and the 10:30, because I was not at the 9:30. This morning we pumped up Dave preaching here tonight. And when he came in, I said, "I'll be pumping you up," and he goes, "I don't know next week." Bad oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it. He goes, "Good. I've got another week to prepare for when I'm on." Yeah. But he is on tonight. He's just been naughty. Uh, so we've been talking about prayer, and then God put on my heart about these uh, monthly prayer meetings, the third Thursday in each month, and the very first one will be on the 18th of uh, June at the Quinana campus. Any, why would you choose Thursday? Well, it seems that only not very many groups meet on Thursday, so it wouldn't inconvenience them. And perhaps if it's at Quinana, they might even bring the whole group there. So we've been studying prayer, now we're gonna do it. That's just a thought. I mean, it doesn't have to do that, that's up to him and his group, but you, you know what I'm saying? It's putting it out there, guys, you with me? You understand where I'm coming from here, yeah? And that, then the, one, the next uh, uh, month will be here in July. And someone, and I did say it in the 10.30, by the way, someone approached me in between the services up the 8.30 and said, could we do the prayer meeting out in the front paddock here? So I mentioned that in the 10.30. Uh, but of course, tomorrow's winter. from then on for a little while. But you're brave people, yeah? You are brave people. Do you want me to pray now? Yeah, for their, brave, for their bravery, yeah. Father in heaven, thank you for gathering us together here this morning or this afternoon. And Thank you for these ministries. For those who can't be here today, Lord, may they be able to watch this on YouTube and pick up the spirit of who we are, where we're going, and how to, how to make uh, the best progress in this ministry of Connect Groups. Thank you, Lord, for all the people uh, that sign up for Connect Groups to become part of this uh, such valuable ministry. And Lord, for these leaders, thank you, Lord, Father. Thank you that they're giving up their time and their talent and uh, their energy 
make these groups happen. And I pray your blessing on them, your grace as they serve you and uh, grow your people. Thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thanks for coming out today.